Hello everyone. Yeah, today's scripture is 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6 verse 19 through 20. Let me read this for you, okay? Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. As you might know, Korea is a very famous country for plastic surgery. Many Korean people believe that the better looking physical appearance you have, the better your chance are at succeeding. So young ladies want to be good looking because they think physical appearance can give them competence in many areas. What about America? Do physically attractive people have an advantage at work? Are they more likely to be selected for a job, promoted in those jobs, or are given higher salaries? Does being physically attractive count more than being competent at work in America? Economist Daniel Hammermuth said, My research show being good-looking have you earn more money, find a higher earning spouse, and even get better deals on mortgage. Isn't it surprised? The word lookism referred to discrimination against a person on the ground of a physical appearance. However, lookism is a stupid thing in the eyes of God. The Bible says the Lord does not look at the things men look at. Men look at the outer world appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Lookism is one of a social phenomenon who gives too much significance to the body and appearance. On the other hand, there is a religious belief which is far different from lookism. Some religion consider that a body is the source of evil. It has to be ignored and even tortured to get freedom of spirit. They intentionally mistreat their bodies to attain a spiritual awakening. Some makes their body as an idol, while some makes their body as a tool which has to be extinguished to get spiritual attainment. Some don't care for their bodies, while some use their bodies only to entertain themselves. No matter how they treat their bodies, there is one common notion that their bodies belong to them. So they just use or serve their bodies according to their will. How does the Bible teach us about our bodies? It says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have received from God, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. The Bible's teaching is very unique compared to the notion that the world has. Then, what can, what can we learn from this verse? First, we don't have any ownership of our bodies, which means we cannot claim that my body is mine, saying, hey, I can do anything with my body. It says, you are not your own. Since we have believed in Jesus, the Holy Spirit came to us and dwells in us, not as a resident, but as a president. Don't get me wrong, Jesus, Jesus is not an invader or predator to take all things from us, including even ourselves. He didn't come to us to snatch something from us, rather He wants to give us more. That's why Jesus wants to come to us. Jesus said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. He wants to have us because by doing so, he can give us more his grace. Our lives are already been exploited and captured by sin. Even though we serve our sin, we don't know it. People don't know sin is an actual problem which endangers and threatens their lives. They don't know that finally they will be destroyed by sin. However, the Holy Spirit is totally different. 
The Holy Spirit wants to dwell in us who live an empty and embittered life. He is the truth who set us free from death and sin. He makes us to bear the fruit of life. He satisfies our spiritual thirst and He feeds us with the heavenly manna. So every day we are standing at a fork to choose who our master is. We can give our ownership of our bodies to sin or the Holy Spirit. Everybody, you, maybe you, had seen brightly colored large dancing air filled tube men that retail store put out in front of their business to advertise. But most people do not know what they are called. They are known as fly guys, sky dancers, or wacky waving inflatable armed flailing tube men, or many other names. But the most common name for them is air dancer. Do you know how an air dancer can stand and dance? Yes, air. There is a blower in the bottom. It blows air to make it stand continually. If you stop the blower, it falls down flat. Our Christian life is similar to the air dancer. Without the Holy Spirit, we fall. We try to put something inside of us to inflate our lives. My brothers and sisters, remember this. Nothing can inflate an air dancer but air. In the same way, nothing can inflate and make our life alive but the Holy Spirit. The worldly things cannot satisfy our soul. All things in the world give us temporary satisfaction, but the Holy Spirit enables us to have eternal satisfaction. Jesus said He would send the Spirit to us to be our helper, comforter, and guide. He said, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another counselor to be with you forever. John 14, 16. The Greek word translated here counselor means the one who is called alongside and has the idea of someone who encourages and exalts. So the Holy Spirit is our counselor to help us all the way through our lives. The Holy Spirit is a revealer of truth. Jesus told his disciples that when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He leads in the way we should go in all spiritual things. Without such a guide, we will be apt to fall into error. With the Spirit, we can stand on truth and we can even know, we can even who God is. Another one of the Holy Spirit's role is that of gift giver. 1 Corinthians 12 describes the spiritual gift given to believers in order that we may function as the body of Christ on earth. The Spirit also functions as a fruit producer in our lives. When He indwells us, He begins the work of harvesting His fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So, we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit, which means our body should be the temple of the Holy Spirit. That is the only way to use our body. The Spirit only desires to occupy our bodies, and our bodies are supposed to be the temple of the Spirit. My brothers, look at people around you. Is there anyone who doesn't have the temple of the Spirit? Is there anyone who doesn't know the Spirit? Why don't you let them know the secret of eternal satisfaction which comes from the Spirit? My brother, let me pray. Dear Lord, we admit and confess that we belong to you and our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let us serve the Holy Spirit who dwell in us. Help us not to use our bodies according to our own will, but God's will, because we are yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.